Repairing a Southworth 12 inch steam pump. This one's part 6, making and fitting a gasket to the top cylinder cover, making the steam chest gaskets, fitting the cylinder cover in place and testing the steam inlet ports using compressed air. Making a top cylinder cover gasket is slightly different to the procedure that I showed in the last episode for making the water chest cover gasket. The centre part of this cylinder cover fits down inside the steam cylinder quite a long way. I've made an imprint on a gasket using the ink pad method and then I roughly cut out the centre, trying really hard not to smudge the ink whilst watching the camera's focus and adjusting the camera. Anyway, once I'd cut out this very rough hole in the middle, I cut out the outside edge, which wasn't particularly brilliant, but then I didn't want it to be because I wouldn't have been able to show this method of cleaning up gaskets generally using a drum sander in my Proxon motor tool which is mounted on the bench. In no time at all I had a really nice neat hole in the centre of the gasket and here it is fitted to the engine. There are different methods of making and fitting gaskets to engines. If you're using very thin gasket paper then you can use the method that John Mills uses which is really good. Just tap around with a ball pane hammer. Although with the combination of quite thick gasket paper that I'm using and the fact that the parts are very small, I think I'll pass on the ball pane hammer method for this job. Instead I use one of the excellent Pika deep hole markers. Pika is spelt P-I-C-A by the way. Once I'd cut out the gasket and punched out all the holes, it was a simple job just to bolt everything together. I don't think these bolts look very good, they're very commercial and very cheap and nasty. But to have to draw the line somewhere, my brief on this job is to repair the engine. And there's still quite a lot left to do. I'm getting very close to the time when I will be making the two slide valves. Then that will be followed by fitting the valves, adjusting their position and seeing if everything works. One by one I carefully fit the bolts around the cylinder cover, but there is a problem. One of the threads in the cylinder itself is actually stripped. So instead of using six bolts to hold the cylinder cover in place, it's going to have to be held in place by five. This is not a problem at all because the cylinder cover is very robust, part of it fits down into the cylinder and it's not going anywhere. I know this may appear to be a bit of a bodge, I'm using some Loctite 542 to hold the bolt securely in place in the stripped hole in the cylinder. Please note I am not using Loctite 603 for this, I don't want to permanently stick the bolt in the hole, just hold it in place to stop it vibrating loose. I have to admit that most of the fixings on this engine are not exactly brilliant. That's enough about that, now I'm going to make two gaskets for the steam chest and the steam chest cover. I folded a piece of gasket material in half, so all I have to do is make an imprint on one side, punch out all the holes, two at a time, then cut out the gasket, after which I will have two perfect mirror image gaskets that will be fitted to the steam chest cover and the steam chest. That's all the holes punched, here I'm cutting around the edge of the imprint, the gaskets are almost complete. I wiped away the ink and removed any small circles of gasket material left by the punch in the holes. Even though these gaskets are currently identical, I'm going to show how to make a large hole in one of them. This is for an inspection plug for adding oil to the steam chest after a run. For the gasket that fits between the steam chest and the cylinder, I had to make two more holes to accommodate the small pipes that connect the ports together. And I think I'll also cut out the centre of the one where I made the hole. If you leave a lot of gasket loose inside an engine, after a while it can start to fall to pieces and small pieces of gasket can block the ports. With the engine in this state, it's a great time to test that the cylinder works okay. I'm applying about 30 pounds per square inch of compressed air alternately to the inlet ports, which as you can see, clearly moves the piston up and down in the cylinder with very little effort, even though the airline is not making a good seal against the ports. I'm very interested in making sure that these ports work, and this centre hole, I figured out, goes to the large hole in the side, which has a pipe that carries it away to exhaust. I've never seen this before. Normally on these pumps, the exhaust from the shuttle piston cylinder is connected internally with the main exhaust port, but this pump has a separate external exhaust pipe. The top and bottom holes on the port face at this side do run internally and admit an exhaust steam from the shuttle piston cylinder. 
Just to be certain that this is going to work, I'm doing quite a lot of pumping compressed air in there to clear any potential blockages and just make sure it works. After doing this for several minutes, the piston started to free up and it moved more freely in both directions. This is possibly due to the glands settling in. Initially, this steamway was blocked, but now as you can hear, it's very clear. Same with the hole at the bottom, here I'm testing that, and there's a definite way through as you can hear by the squeaking of the air. Oddly enough, it sounds like the siren on a model traction engine. I don't quite get that, but anyway. Here I'm testing the sequence of events at the shuttle piston end. And you can clearly see, as I admit air at each end of the piston, it moves as it's supposed to do. Once I've made the two slide valves and one or two other bits and pieces, I'm hoping that this pump is going to work first time. Famous last words. Please stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.